In this video, I create a type of painterly effect with Affinity Photo. Though the basic method is the same for each image, it does have to be adapted on an image by image basis. And some images are more suitable than others. So here I run through the edits of two images to give you a good idea of the process. If you find this video useful and would like to see more, then please like and subscribe. This is a good image to test the painterly effect. It's got a nice dark background, it's well lit and he has a great beard. Clean images with dark backgrounds tend to work very well for this effect. Also, if we take a look at the image dimensions, we see that the image is 2100 pixels wide. This technique does seem to work best with images under around 3000 pixels on the longest edge. I think it's probably something to do with the noise filters. Okay, let's get on with it. First of all, I'll duplicate the layer so I have a backup and a layer for reference. This is always my first job. Okay, time to apply the first filter for creating the painterly look. We're going to start the image processing by adding noise to the image. Zoom in to view the noise effect properly. I'm adding noise to give the denoise something to smooth out later, which should help by creating a smooth, shiny paint surface, especially on the skin. Up to the menu and filters, noise, and add noise. For this image, an intensity of about 30 will be fine. Okay, so let's just set it to 30 and take a closer look. I'm trying to preserve detail in the eyebrows and hair, but at the same time, create noise, especially in the skin. And let's just apply the noise. At the moment, we have noise in the dark areas in the black here, and the face, etc. But I want to remove the noise from the dark areas as it could produce artifacts later on. And the way to achieve this is to use blend ranges. With my layer selected, Hit the cog here and up pops the blend range dialog. Reduce the opacity of the black and dark colors on the layer by bringing this point down to the bottom and then right somewhat. And as you can see, right away it's removed the noise from the shadows. But it's also removed some noise from the darker areas of the skin. If we just bring this point to the left like so, that will Bring back the noise for the midtones and highlights, and less so in the shadows. That's our noise addition complete. We don't need the blend options or blend ranges panel anymore. Let's take a quick look. That's fine. Next, we need to merge both of these layers together into a single layer, and then on this new layer, we will apply our next bunch of filters. Okay, so let's just right click on the top layer and then select Merge Visible. The next adjustment should give us the first hint of the painterly look. It's great that good old Affinity Photo has this feature. It's a feature that I use all the time. And that feature is Tone Mapping. Click this icon to enter the Tone Mapping persona. Wait a few seconds. Zero the tone compression and then push the local contrast up to maximum. And as you can see, we already have a very gritty painted cartoon type effect. That's nice, so hit apply. That's pretty good so far, we're getting there. Okay, the next job is to remove the noise. As I think the painterly effect shouldn't be gritty and noisy, with our layer selected, filters, noise, and denoise. Make sure our color slider is at maximum, and these. Maximum for the luminance. If we look at the skin, it's gone really nice and smooth. We achieved this soft, smooth look with the noise addition before the tone mapping. So as we can see, adding some noise allows the denoise to produce smoother results. But we do want to add back some detail. Bring up the luminance detail, and now we have the smoothing, but with a bit of structure, especially in the skin. Smoothing done, click apply. I think we're starting to get there. As you can see in the black area, or what was the black area, we have no noise or artifacts. 
because we applied blend ranges to the noise addition that we started with. Okay, that's looking pretty good, starting to be quite painterly. We're getting that painterly look, especially here on the skin. The next stage is to add back in more detail, and for that we need sharpening, so filters, sharpen and unsharp mask. First just bring up the factor so we can see how the radius affects the image, and then bring up the radius, I think around 0 0.7 or 8 should do. Then another tweak on the factor, that looks about right. There we go, we've sharpened up the details, but we still have a painterly effect. All we need now to finish the effect is to add another noise reduction. One final noise reduction at this stage should reduce the very fine details from the flat areas of the skin here. Make it more smooth and paint-like. One last time, back to filters and noise and denoise. Now we don't need to denoise too much here, so I'll bring these down, but keeping the colour at 100. Then I'll bring the luminance up to something sensible to start off with. I think that will do for now. Then up with the detail, about there. And I think a tweak on the luminance. There we go, the detail is retained in the eyes and the beard and the hair. And we also have nice smooth skin areas, a bit like paint. Very nice. A basic painterly effect with just a few filters. Noise addition, tone mapping, denoise and sharpening. There are a few enhancements we can make, so we may as well do them while we're here. I think we'll start with levels. First I'll bring up the black slider to give us back our black background. That takes care of the grey background caused by the tone mapping. Next adjust the white level. Bring it down and I think that's fine. I do want to generally lighten the mid-tones a little. So down with the gamma slider to bring up the mid-tones, sort of a brighten. Next, I just want to tone the whole thing down a bit, so bring down the output white. That's looking pretty good. That's our basic tone set for the image. Next, I'd like to just enhance the painterly effect a little on the skin. Just make it look a little more shiny. I would like the skin to be a little redder, but mostly I'd like a slightly shiny painterly look on the highlights. For this one, I think I'll use the selective color adjustment. And by default, we're affecting the reds. I'd like to add that little bit of redness to the skin, so I'll just increase the magenta a tad. Now I just want to darken the reds a little, so down to the black slider and up with the slider, which will darken the reds like so. Now for the shine, select the whites to highlight the paint. If I use the black slider here and decrease it, it will increase the lightness of the whites. Okay, I think that'll do. That looks pretty good. And as you can see, the paint effect on the skin has become slightly shiny, glossy. I think that is looking quite painterly. It's a sort of basic painterly effect. It could definitely be enhanced a bit more for a final picture. It needs quite a bit of clean up on the jumper, for instance. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that, so let's take a look at it compared to the original. Merge visible. Select and turn off the intermediate layers. Here we go. Before and after, and before, and after. For this second image, we'll do a similar process, though it does have to be adapted on an image-by-image -image basis. We'll start by resizing the document. It's a tad large. Document, resize document, long edge, 2500, 
which is still plenty big enough for social media and most other uses. And then duplicate the layer so that I have a layer for backup and reference. Next, we'll add the noise, normal first step, filters, noise, and add noise. Again, around 30 should be about fine. Yep, that's good. We've got some nice noise, especially for the skin, but we've retained the detail that we need. Next, the local contrast. Hit the tone mapping persona icon. Wait a couple of seconds as usual, then down with the tone compression and up with the local contrast. OK, click apply. Take a look. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Just where we want to start. Next, the denoise, filters, noise and denoise, luminance 100, colors 100. Then we want just enough detail. I think about, let's take a look around there. We've still got just enough detail for sharpening. That's all good. And now, as before, we'll do a sharpen. So filters, sharpen and unsharp mask. For this first sharpen, I'm trying to get the basic painterly look. I'm not trying to get sharp details. I'm using quite a wide radius and quite a high factor. There we go. The first sharpen has created a type of painterly structure in the skin. Not going to worry about the fine details at the moment. First, we're going to do another denoise. We might even denoise three times in this image. Okay. Filters, noise, and denoise. Maximum luminance and minimum luminance detail. I want to really smooth out the skin. Apply that. That's looking pretty good, but as we can see, it's definitely lacking definition. So we want to sharpen up the details, especially the eyebrows and hair. Okay, filters, sharpen and unsharp mask. Now a smaller radius than last time, as we're sharpening detail. We'll do this again with an even smaller radius to get the very fine detail sharp. But for now, I think for this first detail sharpen, that's fine. Now for sharpening of even finer detail, like these eyelashes, another unsharp mask. I'm sure you know where the unsharp mask is by now. This time, a really small radius. I'm sharpening the fine details and a factor of about 0.8 or so. Fine. I'll just apply that. And there we go all our detail sharpening done in two stages, one for detail and one for very fine detail. And we have a basic painterly look. I'm going to give it one more denoise because I really like the very smooth skin look on this type of image. Select the denoise filter again. So filters, noise and denoise. And looking at it, them settings are fine. That's giving it a lovely smooth painterly look. I really want to get rid of this little artifact. You will get them with these types of processes. So we'll use the in painting tool, which is here. Check the settings, opacity and flow at 100. Bring the hardness right down. A nice soft brush. It should just take two or three little strokes to paint out this processing artifact. And done. That looks fine. Okay, so that's the basic painterly look. Though I would like to just enhance it a little bit, add a couple of finishing touches. We'll add a little bit of basic brightness and contrast just to improve the tone. This won't need too much. I think just a tad darker, reduce the brightness like so, and a little bit of contrast. That's fine. Again, with this image, I'm going to lighten up the highlights a little bit with selective color. One of my favorite adjustments, very powerful. Select the whites and bring the black slider down to increase the whites. We can see the light areas getting whiter. That's a bit too much. I think around that is fine. Let's take a look and zoom in a little. I think that is looking pretty nice. Okay, let's just merge all of the layers together for comparison. Check against the original. Merge visible, 
select the in-between layers and turn them off. Let's do a comparison with the original to see what we've done before and after and before and after. Not a bad looking effect, even if I do say so myself. Now the skin is quite smooth, which I like, but you may prefer a more painterly texture. That's pretty easy to achieve if we just duplicate our layer like so. We just apply an unsharp mask. So here we go, unsharp mask. It's best to be at least one to one when applying these types of filters. So zoom in, up the radius, and then a lower factor, something like about there. And now you can see we've got what look like nice paint contours on the skin. But this sharpen pass has introduced sort of highlights into the detailed areas. It's sharpened the detail too much, but we can fix that. Let's just apply the sharpen. Then with our layer selected, select the mask icon. We now have a mask on the layer. And if we select our paintbrush, make sure opacity and flow are 100, hardness is zero. Again, a nice soft brush. I'll just select the color tab here, make sure I've got a white brush. Then set our brush size, control I to invert the mask to remove the effect. And then with our paintbrush, paint the effect back in to the skin. We're now painting on the mask. Now just paint all over the skin. We want to avoid the detail as that's what we're trying not to sharpen. I'll make sure I've got all of the skin and the neck and maybe even the t-shirt like so. Okay, let's zoom in to take a look. And as we can see, the skin now has a slightly more textured painterly look. Here we have smooth and slightly textured. And there we have another example of creating a painterly effect with Affinity Photo.